Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to my build video of Dragon's 135th M3A2 half track, kit number 6332. So this is a 3-in-1 kit that allows you to build either the M3, M3A1 or A2 variant of the venerable US made half track. So this half track is going to be a part of a larger diorama project which is going to include Ming's M4A3 E2 Jumbo which is going to be built up as Cobra King and this uh, project is going to depict 37th Tank Battalion of the 4th Armored Division so Crate and Abrams Battalion preparing to make their thunder run towards the besieged city of Bastogne. So here are the two images we have um, Cobra King on the right and then the general photograph on the left is actually taken maybe about a month before they are then and that's actually depicting Creighton's own Thunderbolt 6 which is an M4 A376 but the general kind of composition is going to be the inspiration for our upcoming diorama. However we'll be switching out Creighton's mount for Cobra King. So cracking open the box we're greeted with a load of the very iconic Dragon Grey Styrene as well as our notorious dragon instructions, which thankfully in this case will not be the main problem of this build, which we'll get into as we get into it. I've also got some lovely resin storage sets from Blast Model. These are a French company, I believe, and we have some really nice different storage sets. And we're gonna kind of pick and choose different parts out of these three different sets to make up the uh, storage and character for our M3. So we can see there was quite a few sprues, so this is not a novice build by any stretch of the imagination. And as we get into it, I'll, I'll point out why. So like all soft skin vehicles, we're going to start off with the engine assembly, which in this case is actually quite a well detailed and uh, quite involved process. And the funny thing is, we're not going to see any of this. However, I just thought I would include it for brevity. I'm also using lemon flavored or citrus flavored extra tin or scented extra tin, you know, because I like my solvent abuse to be nice smelling. So this is somewhat of a delicate um, assembly for the engine. However, it is, I have to admit, it is very nicely detailed and it's almost a crying shame that we're never going to see it again once we install it. Now we're moving on to the axles. And the nice thing with these axles is if you remove or snip away these square locating uh, pegs here, you can actually pose the axles. And since I want this for a diorama, I want to have a little um, articulation in the uh, front wheels just to add some interest. So I'm just going to uh, carefully remove these. So it's somewhat important to ensure that you um, mount these hubs the right way and also that they line up in a believable manner because I want to have the wheel somewhat turned. So I'm just being careful to ensure that the angles match on either side. Now moving on to the radiator, which is a um, pretty substantial piece. It's a big block of, of pretty crisp plastic here, I have to say. But again, some very crisp detail. And so far, the uh, dragon monster has not struck just yet, but we'll get to that.
So you can see how much the suspension takes up in the build. This is probably the most time that's going to be spent building this half track is actually working on the suspension. And it's also probably the best part of the kit. Um, everything actually works very well here. There's no weird fit alignment issues or anything strange. However, I want to draw your attention when you're working with the uh, very nice two-piece wheels here. I find that the hubs won't fit because there's slightly raised injection pin marks in the inner faces of these tires. So I just find that you have to scrape these away to get the uh, inner hub to actually uh, mate with the wheel. And the fit is so tight they almost don't even need any glue at all, however I just put a small amount of extra tin in just to lock everything into place. So moving on to the sprockets, these are quite delicate but these are really nice slide molded um, sprockets. So they just take a little bit of jigging around just to get them to line up correctly. So these are a little bit tricky and fiddly so just pay kind of attention to the instructions just to ensure that you're um, building them the right sequence. Now we're moving on to the bogies. So this is probably one of the more complex steps in the build so far, is assembling the bogies. They are quite nicely detailed, so again just study the instructions to ensure that you align things the correct way. Um, it did take me a little bit of test fitting in certain cases just to work out what the instructions were asking me to do. So the return rollers were a little bit loose, so I'm just going to glue them in place so they don't pop off. And now we're moving on to the road wheels, which are these teensy tiny little road wheels. Or they look like uh, Sherman Easy 8 uh, return rollers actually now that I look at them. Speaking of Easy 8, we'll be uh, doing another one in the near future of a very famous one, but uh, more on that later. So I'm mounting them to their uh, respective um, buggy assemblies. So you have two wheels and then two swing arms either side. These are a bit delicate, so what I found was if I just kind of glue one side first, like so. So by just sandwiching them together, hold them in place, and then a little bit of quick set and extra tin, um, I got them to line up pretty well. So now moving on to the chassis, and as you can see this is a pretty involved little step, it's a very nicely detailed chassis assembly. Again, the instructions at times during steps like these are a little bit vague. However, by just test fitting, the locator pegs do such a good job that it only allows you to do things a certain way. So when in doubt, just do a quick test fit, see what the actual locating tabs will allow you to do, and everything will fall into place that way.
that we're mounting to suspension coils. These are quite interesting little assemblies. Um, they do, they are a little bit fiddly, but again, just take your time and just align things carefully as you go. And they will kind of pop together. They did take a bit of finessing just to, to get everything to line up correctly. I'm actually quite impressed so far how this kit's going. It has not bitten me yet. The dragon monster has yet not struck. Now we start mounting the engine assembly. The alignment and fit so far has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I haven't found any real major problems. Everything just slots together and interacts in a really positive manner so far. It's been a really nice experience thus far. Now we're moving on to the, the first tricky part. And this requires a bit of forethought as how to assemble the tracks. So on the M3 family, these are actually a single piece rubber band track on the actual one to one scale vehicle. And my idea was to leave these loose and place them either side of the um, sprockets and it just would not work. It was just too delicate. So I'm going to actually glue the sprocket and return or sorry the sprocket and the idler should i say in place and then leave the uh the bogey loose so i can in theory pop these off and painting separately if everything goes well we'll see how well that goes when we actually come to the painting of this in the, in the next episode of this build so this did take a little bit of test fitting but once i was kind of happy with everything we have our lower hull ready to go So I was going to actually build this as um, an M1A or an M3A1 with the um, the winch and it's going to use the blast um, resin replacement for the kits part and it's a gorgeous part but in the end I'm not going to actually end up using it. Um, I just I think I made a bit of a mistake somewhere building the kit. I removed too much of the kit originals like support struts and I couldn't get this to mount in the manner I was meant to. So we're going to land up not using this part and using the um, on ditching roller however I just want to show this off because it's an absolute gorgeous piece of resin so that's kind of what I had and it just literally kept falling off so we're going to go back and replace that with anti-ditch rolling drum for the front of the vehicle now moving on to the cab or the driver's compartment so this was a little bit fiddly and uh, it was actually so fiddly I couldn't film half of it so we're going to keep moving on and as I mentioned I opted in the end to actually use the anti-ditching um, roller instead uh, so I just replaced the uh, front bumper uh, with the uh, appropriate part we have a bit of a seam line going through the center of that drum however we're going to be covering this with a lot of mud and snow so you're not going to really see that so we can hide that later on so not to panic now we're going to add our dashboard And it's, it's about now I begin to notice that some of the alignment here on the uh, driver compartment isn't completely square. So the dragon monster is about to strike. So the windshield is a single clear styrene piece. So I'm going to mask off this so I can continue building. And I'm just going to take some Tamiya tape and just taking a pencil, I'm just going to trace around the window frame here. Now you can remove these or cut them in situ. I prefer just to cut my masks in situ just with a, a fresh hobby blade and just using the pencil lines as a marker. And I've masked off both sides and now it's ready for installation onto the driver compartment. And then moving on to the armor covers, we're, we're provided with some nice photo wedge covers for the few ports that we're in this case going to model in the open position. Now moving on to the true compartment. So this is a pretty involved little step, there's quite a bit going on in this. So we're going to start off by adding the 
uh, support brackets to the underside of the troop compartment. And then with these very delicate um, rails here, if you like, um, these were a little bit fiddly to place. However, uh, just with a little bit of extra tin and a bit of patience, they uh, behaved in the end. Then we're adding the, uh, I believe this is like the, the crew commander or the infantry commander seat, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure what designation this seat has. It's right in the center of the, uh, or the forward center of the troop compartment. This is a fiddly little piece, and it's actually going to be a little bit of a pain once I install it when I start trying to make sub assemblies. And you'll see why as we go further into this. So I'm going to mount that seat into place. This is a little bit delicate and fiddly. Um, this took a little bit of positioning and the patience to get this to actually sit correctly and not fall off. Now we're mounting the side walls to the troop compartment. And it's at this moment the dragon monster strikes. So when I come to mount the, or when I come to assemble the upper hull, I know it's one of the sidewalls is heavily warped. As you can see here, it's bowed and flared out. And this is going to cause me no shortage of problems. Um, I knew that these kits were a bit finicky. And, you know, most dragon kits kind of are. They will put you through your paces. And this is going to be no exception. So up until this moment, this has been a pretty pleasant build. And from here, the nightmares begin. So you can see how bold this out this is. However, I'm going to glue this first, and then using a clamp, I'm going to try to just lock it in place as squarely as possible to try to correct that warping as much as possible. Once that's been allowed to dry, I'm going to mount the other side, and then using the rear plate as my square, if you like, I'm going to mount them together and use that as a means to try to pull the warped hull section together and try to line it up square. And I don't fully undo that warp. You can kind of see it. However, it's um, it's workable at least for now. So now I want to keep moving on, adding some of the uh, 30 cal machine gun mounts for the troop compartment. as well as the antenna mount. Again, the detail is very nice on this kit. I, I have to give it thumbs up for that. I can't fault it on its detail. However, this section is going to cause me a lot of problems going forward, trying to get things to um, line up correctly. So my plan was to leave the cab and troop compartment separate so I could remove them and paint them individually. However, the alignment between the end of the troop compartment and the start of the uh, driving compartment or cab, as you can see, there's at least like three millimeter gaps. So that is gone out the window. And this is why I have to prime the interior because I'm going to have to glue these together in order to make this work. So I have to kind of prime 
some of the areas that I can't get into with this in mind. So sometimes dragon kits make you have to think a little bit into the future and how you're going to tackle them. And sometimes even force you to change how your, your plan altogether. And this kit is one of those kits, unfortunately. So I'm going to just give things a bit of a sand, trying to square things up as much as possible. And then I'm going to glue both the uh, driver and fighting compartments together. I've also painted dashboard and masked it off because I won't be able to get into that later on. And I managed to correct by just basically um, clamping everything together that big gap. So now just a little bit of filler and that's all that's needed to hide that. I also noticed that I wouldn't be able to paint these voids in the troop compartment for these stowage bins. So I'm just going to make some um, tarps out of epoxy putty and I'm just going to fill those voids. One just add a bit of character and a bit of stowage to the interior and also means I don't have to have any blank area showing through because I won't be able to get the airbrush into those areas. Now something nice. So now we're going to add some of the really nice resin storage sets from uh, Blast. These lovely boxes I'm going to mount to the back. As well as these lovely one piece um, fender storage blocks here. Again these were just mounted with a little bit of CA glue. And these worked absolutely lovely. These were the kind of the thing that made the build a little nicer for me in the end because this turned into a right pick to put together. And after all that fighting and clamping and wanting to stab my eyes out, we managed to get this model together. So guys, I would recommend this kit if you want, want to challenge yourself, make you lose your sanity a little bit. And also too, it's a, it, those of us who are into the US Armour Divisions, this vehicle is so iconic that you kind of have to have one really in the in the stash phase that's how i feel so guys i hope this uh, gives you an idea of what's in store for you it is a nice kit once put together it's quite a pretty looking machine actually i quite do like the m3s um just be prepared for a little bit of a battle and uh, i hope this video kind of gives you an idea of maybe how to approach it so guys do join me in the upcoming videos for this diorama build where we're going to be covering the construction of ming's m4a3 jumbo for Cobra King and the later diorama project. So thank you so much for watching guys. I have been Shane. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you the next episode. Bye bye.